Thank you, Paul. Although it's a little bit complicated to refer your uh, briefing, at least I can agree with you and adopt your recommendation about doubling the <laughs> budget, especially the defense R&D budget. Our next uh, speaker is Mr. Robert Cho, who is the President and Chief and CEO of uh, NetOptics since 2001, and he is responsible for conceiving and implementing corporate vision and strategy to position NetOptics as a leading provider of total application and network visibility solutions for both physical and virtual environments. The company is included in, included in the elite list of highest performing companies three years in a row, received honors of, for excellence and awards and accolades. Shows leadership experience spans startups to Fortune 200 organizations, and he held senior vice presidential executive positions. It is my pleasure to invite you to speak about leveraging SDN for network visibility, security, and threat response. Please. Good morning, and it's great to be back. As I chatted with you, a number of you at the break, the one thing we kept talking about is as we look around the room, the number of entrepreneurs, the education and the leadership in this room is different than many conferences all of us go to. And so the energy and passion you get out of this as I look around the room is this is a group that can make a dramatic change in this industry. However, one of the things I want to start with is we've got some big challenges. Challenge number one is the approach that we're using today for network security is not working. Period. And I'll explain why. And the second challenge is we as vendors and the suppliers need to change the way that we're thinking about the world because in many cases you're still thinking about incremental change in point solutions instead of revolutionary change and great breakthrough. And so one of the things that I'm going to frame today is an approach that's been deployed, it's working, and it's a completely new way of looking at the world. Because in order to win in the war on cyber attacks, we have to take a completely new approach. And it means, if you think about all of us came together today, invested our time to focus on how do we change this. And what typically happens is when we leave, we go back to what we know best in doing things the way that we traditionally do. What you're going to hear from me today is an approach that we need to take when we leave here of how we need to band together and approach this industry, this market, and this war on cybersecurity in a completely different way. Now, for those of you that were here last year, I made some bold promises. And the promises were, as a company, we believe in Israel. We're going to invest in Israel. Our founder of the company, grew up in Israel and moved to the United States when he was in his teens. And the commitment was, how do we band together and take the technology and the resources and the talent that is in Israel and we're going to invest in it. And so my commitment was we were going to open up an R&D center, we were going to hire the best and brightest talent, and we were going to grow and use this as a springboard, not only in Israel, but across Europe. And so we believe in accountability in the company. I gave myself a scorecard, the company a scorecard, on how we did. And let's take a look at it. We gave ourselves an A+. Plus. Here's the deal. We opened the R&D Center. Huge success. We hired 20 of the brightest, talented, skillful individuals that we could find. And they have continued to bring other resources with them, and we will continue to grow. And sales are doubling. Now, if you look at what we're doing, we've got the VP of Technology, Sharon Besser, who many of you know, and the VP of Engineering, Shlomo Garfinkel. 
They have built a team that is so focused on how we win in this space because we need to make some changes. And let's take a look at what they are. First of all, the logos that are flashing across the top are household brand names. And they have suffered breaches in security. 130 major incidents to date so far in 2013. 70 percent of these were discovered, and listen to the stat on this, were discovered by folks other than the organizations themselves. And in most cases, it was by one of us if we were the consumers. That's completely wrong. And 44 million records were compromised. Why is this happening? We have a different perspective in the way that we look at the world. For those of you that are familiar with NetOptics, you know that we actually form the backbone in some of the largest organizations around the world. We actually have products and services that are sitting both in telcos, the largest government agencies, and the largest enterprise. We have 7,000 customers. The reason I mention this is the way that we look at the world is completely different. We have a unique perspective. All of the data from the networks run through our products, and then we feed the security tools. We're able to view and see what current and future networks look like, typically better than anyone else in the world. And what we see and what customers talk to me about when I'm with them, whether it's a CIO or a CTO or a CEO or the head of a large military establishment is they're really worried that the way that they're thinking about and deploying their security solutions is not right because what they're facing are the tools are becoming overwhelmed. And as a result, they can't keep up. And the reason is because they're not thinking about an architecture that's completely different. And so what we're talking about is how you actually build a security centric network. How do you think about designing in security from the very beginning so that the DNA of the network is constantly thinking in a different way? And you're not dependent upon one particular tool in order to handle it. If you think about one of the comments that Art made, he really emphasized how total visibility across the network is key. And one of the challenges that most organizations face today is I have a data center that's built and I also have a cloud and virtualization environment and I'm trying to build a security centric network and how am I going to have visibility across both of those important infrastructures at the exact same time. You've got to have total visibility into all of them. You need to make sure you're utilizing the industry standards and you need to also be very clear that as you are managing both of these very important infrastructures that you've got simple centralized management because if you don't the thing that will continue to happen is the tools will absolutely get overwhelmed. So this is how typical security deployments are done today. One, and this was interesting because over about the last two weeks the conversations happened twice. Customers have deployed security solutions, the best of class, and they said, you know what, what I'm putting in the network today actually took two years to engineer, design, and release. So from the time I have it, it's actually outdated. So you've got outdated innovations that are point solutions that you're trying to get deployed. You have advanced threat that you're trying to deal with all these vectors and how you're going to handle those. Zero day exploits. You actually have the security tool that you want to have solve the problem now becomes the risk. And as we've all said, we've got limited time, limited resources. How in fact are we going to be able to deal with that? Here's how we're thinking about the problems. One, high availability. So knowing that we've got critical spots of the network, what's typically happening is customers are actually deploying two or three security devices in certain areas to make sure they're covering it. They've got complex deployments. So as a result of this, they're saying we've got to go with a mesh type of network so we have the ability to deal with anything that can happen and be very responsive. Or constant innovation. We've got to make sure that we've got the latest and greatest technology so that we can try to anticipate anything that happens, not necessarily knowing what it is. And the fourth way is just we've got to continue to invest and spend 
maybe we can spend our way out of it. And it won't work. And so what we've seen and what we've recommended and what we've deployed is a concept where the actual network becomes part of the solution. Now imagine for a second if the network could make decisions on its own. And when networks saw that in a particular area that the amount of traffic or the patterns started to become unusual. And as a result, it could actually redeploy tools itself without human intervention. And it could take what is typically one or two security tools that are targeted to that particular part of the network and repurpose and redeploy four or five others because it knew that the attack that was coming in the next minute was something that it hadn't prepared for and the current tools that were targeted to it would not be enough. This is currently being done today and it's a completely different way of architecting visibility and security into the network. The other thing that you think about is how do I end up covering all the various corners of a network so that I not only have visibility into what's happening, but I'm able to take action on what I see. And one of the key pieces of this is as you design the network, both from a cloud and virtualization and from a physical standpoint, you in many ways never have any idea of where the breach in security is going to come from. But what you need to have happen is the tools repurpose themselves in real time so that they can handle it. And what we're seeing happen is these networks are being designed. You have three or four security suppliers sitting in a conference room together with the customer architecting the network. You have the APIs that are starting to be shared so the infrastructure becomes a living, breathing, operational security structure so that they can be responsive, proactive, and take action in a very quick manner. Here's an example of what it looks like. SDN is a buzzword that everybody's using. It's a very important point. As you design your centralized controller that's looking across the entire network, it gives you the ability to have centralized management no matter what tools you're using in the industry. And then you can take a series of products labeled in the industry. You'll hear this term network bracket brokers. They're devices that sit in the backbone of the network. All of the security tools, the best of class, are plugged into those. And what starts to happen is you now have designed a network that's completely agile. It can move quickly. It can anticipate what's going to happen. And it can take tools that were originally targeted for a certain part of the network and redeploy them wherever you need without human intervention in a very quick, timely manner. And here's an example of what it looks like. So all of a sudden, you have a threat that's entering into the network. The centralized controller says, looks like something unusual is going on. I better make sure that the current tools that I have are being deployed correctly. It goes down to the network packet broker. It actually reconfigures the network, reconfigures the tools, and allows the tools come to into play to take action on what it is that needs to happen. In the past, without configuring it as a security-centric network, you would actually, in some cases, say, you know what, the attack is so large, the tools are becoming overwhelmed, it looks like I've got to call in help, take that part of the network down, shut things down, take some action, because the tools are not able to keep up. It's impossible when you're dealing with the scale and scope that you are talking about to be able to do that. You have to think out of the box. We need to design it completely different. And so the key attributes are focused, there are these five, and they're really important. How are you thinking about having total visibility across the entire network so that you can respond quickly? How do you easily provision the information that you need so that you can respond? How are we developing standards across what we're all doing so that, in fact, we can take all the energy and all of the ideas and all of the insight that we've got here and actually bring it to bear and what we do in our daily lives. Making sure that it's simple and centralized as we start to provide the solutions. And in fact, we are clear in how we're separating what we're doing from a monitoring standpoint and what we're doing for a security enforcement standpoint. Now, here's a challenge that I have. 
One of the things that I wanted to do as we go forward is give you an example of how this is actually being deployed. So you'll notice when you go out into the common area, we have some of the best and brightest that we've hired. We actually have on display some of the products that are being used not only here in Israel, but around the globe that are making a huge difference as we think about this security century network. So spend some time with the team. And I actually have a call to action. I thought about giving you four or five points that you would remember, write down, have in the presentation. I said, no, I actually want to bring back some data to you next year. And so what I'd ask each of you to do is actually take this online survey for us. It'll take you less than 60 seconds. And what we'll do is we'll accumulate the data and I'll feed it back to you to show you what the results are. And we will start to gather some very interesting information across the globe on how we're all thinking about dealing with the cyber warfare and the action that we can take together. Because as a result, if we leave and we do it individually, we're not going to see the change. If we band together, we can change the world. Thank you very much.